Eleanor Tomlinson is an award-winning artist and illustrator based in East Yorkshire. Back in June, she was inspired to create an image of Her Majesty the Queen and Paddington Bear holding hands and strolling away from the Jubilee festivities. The image was widely shared on social media and Eleanor was swamped with messages, requests for work and interests from all corners of the globe. She also created a picture of three corgis celebrating the Jubilee which received approval from none other than Her Majesty the Queen herself. And Eleanor is with us here. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you here. Now, this last few months, has it been quite overwhelming with all your stuff going viral? Absolutely. Um, so overwhelming. I think I think that word is such an understatement. Yes. Uh, it's been, yeah, I'm, I've been lost for words at every turn. Yeah. So where did the idea to do these Jubilee drawings come from? Well, the first one, which is um, the one you mentioned, it, there was, um, it was Jubilee Fever. So there was sort yeah. of two versions of it, if you like. So there was one featuring the single Corgi that was there then edited and joined into a larger design with another couple of corgis um you know like that kind of sort of street party kind of get together jubilee picnic kind of feeling yeah. um so i like to call that one the the planned jubilee illustration because that was the one that i decided and designed maybe I must have been beginning of april now this year wow. and the plan was always for that one to be a card and print design and of course as you as you very kindly mentioned, um, I I did get a response from from Windsor Castle and um, a, a lovely personal letter from one of her ladies in waiting. As the first, I decided seventy of that design is a limited edition print, seventy for the Platinum Jubilee, and number one out of seventy was always kept to one side to send to Buckingham Palace. Mm. So to have received a thank you uh, was oh, I was so touched because I never for one moment expected to hear back you know when you think of the thousands of um, cards gifts um, Her Majesty must have received back in June and in the lead up to the Jubilee never for one moment did I think I I thought oh you know if there's any chance she might have seen my work I thought that would just you know be be more than enough but to actually hear back wow um, it's 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 now framed and up on my studio wall I'm so thrilled about that but then obviously then in June uh that one (laughs) I just call it that one everybody knows what I mean now quite funny but um, of course I sat down like millions of others across the world to tune into party at the palace on that Saturday evening was just absolutely caught up in that magical opening and I just instantly envisaged that scene of them holding you know each other's hand walking away and not all the details were decided obviously because I ended up painting her in green which um we didn't know she was going to be wearing until she came out on the balcony uh but that was just the perfect finishing touch really I was just about to start painting and yeah and I I wasn't sure what color to paint the queen in and it was at that moment that she stepped out onto the balcony so it was instantly right that's the colour she's going to be wearing and literally did, was just so off the cuff it was on the Sunday that was created whilst watching the pageant yeah. finished it took a photo it was just meant to be a little social media post just to say I hope everyone's had a wonderful bank holiday weekend celebrating with loved ones and minutes later it was just snowballing and just it was everywhere wow. um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> who'd have thought <laughs> was it that quick like literally as soon as you posted it, it yes it, I mean, I don't, it wasn't at that point I realised it was going, but it was really funny actually thinking back because I remember later on Sunday evening, so I was away at the time actually, and I was away with my mum and my dad rang just, you know, just, you know, check check up on us and ask, you know, were we having a good time? And my mum and so I said, oh, Ellie's drawing's gone viral. <laughs> and I remember just laughing and thinking, oh, no, it hasn't. Like it was, you know, I was thinking, oh, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's, But I didn't think it'd gone viral or anything like <laughs> that. It was quite funny, really. Um, and it was, I think it was until the next day when I had 
effort at first at our local paper trying to get in touch and uh, my friends texting me and you do realize it's everywhere and I think at that point it slowly start it became more real and I actually started to realize what was happening but I think I was the last person to accept it had gone viral. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think I heard you got what 25,000 emails and messages and things how do you keep on top of that because surely you can't read all of them oh with difficulty that's been <laughs> for me the most um the most difficult but i mean it's a wonderful problem to have don't get me wrong but yeah. i mean it's in excess now i mean that that was in that first week week or so so i i hate to think how many emails now that i've either received or um you know responded to and i've responded to as many as i as i can um you know and try to sort of prioritize because obviously you know it's mostly just me um i think people sometimes don't realize what a small business um it is it's it's mostly me my mum works now for me full-time before all of this she was just working maybe um six hours a week for me just helping with bits and pieces and she's been here five six days a week nearly since back in june so it's it's been a massive um a massive undertaking but you wouldn't i wouldn't change it for the world of course but it's it's Mm -hmm. been difficult and I do apologise to anybody who for any reason hasn't, um, you know, contacted me and hasn't had a reply. I really have done my best. Some of the late nights, it's some, in the, especially in those first weeks, I was up until 5am trying to go through emails and it was, yeah, I hope people can appreciate it. It was just unsustainable, really. So I'm doing my yeah. best still. Yeah. And of course, the Queen was the Queen of the UK and indeed the Commonwealth. But where have you received all your messages and orders from? Is it even further afield than that? Oh, absolutely. It's it's absolutely astonishing, really, yeah. um, because it's it's been it's been everything on my website. I mean, the impact it's had on my small business and myself as an artist has just been out of this world. I mean, at one point. Well, no, at multiple points over the last three months, every single product, design, item that I have on my website has been out of stock more than once, I'm sure. So, you know, it's been every, it's it's just so strange when you're, you know, because I I mostly focus on British wildlife and um, (laughs) when you're sending something that seems so quintessentially british but you're sending it to texas or sending it to i don't know japan and it it just it's brilliant it's amazing but it just it's so it seems so strange uh sending all these um like i say just iconically british um you know wildlife pieces everywhere every we we should have we should go back and write a list because i think we can nearly tick off every country there's only a handful of countries and it's down to um sort of you know current unfortunate circumstances maybe war or sort of um social unrest and things like that are probably the only sorts of countries that we've not posted out to because you physically can't get it there yeah. but um but no all across america australia new zealand japan china wow. yeah everywhere absolutely everywhere <laughs> yeah. And have you found that the interest in your Jubilee art has also drawn more attention to your wildlife stuff? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it was through those alone that um, people have been, more, more people have begun hearing about me and then have maybe sort of, you know, gone onto my website or gone onto my social media and seen the other things that I've done. Yeah. Um, so the impact that those little fun jubilee illustrations have had has been yeah it's it's been life changing really and i read that star of downton abbey and of course star of the paddington movies hugh bonneville (laughs) asked for a copy of one of your artworks is that right he did yes i was absolutely blown away when i realized um it was in those first couple of days in back in june and um 
yeah, he, 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 well, I didn't realize um, he'd ordered one and he, he shared it really kindly on, I think it was Instagram. And somebody had screenshot and sent it to me because I wasn't, I was a bit overwhelmed and I wasn't really on social media in those first few weeks, barely at all. Yeah. And um, somebody sort of said, Oh, have you seen um, um, Hugh Bonneville's shared it? And so I, I um, sent him a message just to say thank you so much and how much it means to know um that he he loved it he loved it too and he was you know he he shared a really kind comment about it i just wanted to um express my gratitude really to him personally and he sort of said oh i've put in my order um for you know a piece of eleanor tomlinson's art and i was like oh my gosh thank you so so much you know never expected that so i remember it was quite late in the evening i just shouted to my mum i was like lord grantham's order (laughs) yeah it's um oh god Gosh, no, there's so so many amazing things that have happened in the last three months. It's yeah. been yeah, a whirlwind. Yeah. And it's kind of had a second wave, if you like, because of the unfortunate circumstances of the Queen passing away. It's been used again as tributes. I mean, people have left it with the flowers, haven't they? It has. It's been it's been such a a bittersweet time because mm. I, I just wish it was under happier circumstances that it's had this resurgence in the recent in the in the recent couple of weeks um and it's yeah it's such a mixture of emotions because of course the illustration was created you know only three months ago but back um to celebrate and commemorate happier times and whether that's partly why um so many are fond of it again to mark the queen's passing which is such a a devastating um devastating event uh, has just been it's been really, really humbling. It's, it's so, like I say, it, it's really bittersweet because it's lovely to see it out there and on those floral tributes and know that it's brought so much comfort and joy to many at such a, to such, just such a difficult time. It's really hard to articulate, but I just, I just wish it was, it was a happier event that meant that it was, um, it, I was seeing it all over the place. It's just every time I see it now, it's just a reminder of what's happened. And it's just such, such a sad moment in history. Um, but to know that that piece has been just so well received by so many is it's just amazing. It really is magical. Yeah, absolutely. So where did your interest in art begin? Oh, I can't even remember. <laughs> when I was tiny, when I could, you know, probably when I could first hold a pencil. Um, I know my mum likes to recall the stories from nursery when they first picked up. So I must have picked up on, um, I don't know, I, I feel a bit awkward saying my artistic talent, but I suppose, you know, it, it was there even back then. Apparently at the age of two, I was able to draw with perspective, which is really unusual apparently. Mm. Um, but it's just always been something that I've naturally gravitated towards and I've never particularly been pushed that way but equally I've never sort of been um, told that I can't do that either I've just been sort of left to my own um, choices of what I wanted to pursue and that as early as I can remember is just naturally what I've always been gravitated towards so I naturally you know loved that subject at school chose it for GCSE A levels went to go through the illustration at university mm. um, and began whilst at school um, I suppose a hobby business that steadily over the last 10 years grown into what it has today but I mean I finished university nearly three years ago to the day that the jubilee happened so back in wow. 2019 wow. I graduated and um, I just all, I just keep thinking, gosh, if somebody had told me at that moment of dissertation stress and all of that stuff <laughs> going on in essays and degree shows that in three years' time, it, you know, something that you create is going to go viral oh, you'd just you'd just laugh wouldn't you you'd yeah. just think gosh no don't be silly that you know that that'll never happen so it's, it's um, yeah I feel really really fortunate when you're making art what normally inspires you when there's yeah. not big jubilee events going on is it mainly just <laughs> wildlife it is so I live in rural East Yorkshire 
Uh, and I, I am, I'm just, I'm inspired by the local countryside around me, whether it's the wildlife and animals, you know, I've always grown up next to barns. Um, yeah. My daily walks straight outside the house are, you know, into just open fields and you're nearly always bouncy deer, barn owls, all sorts wow. really. So I think because I've been surrounded by that all my life, that's just naturally what I've gravitated towards to capture and celebrate through my art. Um, it also includes, you know, the odd tractor and Land Rover as well, because you see plenty <laughs> of those out here in, in rural Yorkshire. Um, but yeah, it's just, I love the countryside. I love animals. It's my happy place. So I suppose, you know, there's, there's that um, that lovely feeling, again, when you're then drawing. And uh, even if you're not surrounded by it and you're back at home, but that's what you're drawing and painting and creating. It's just such a lovely, warm feeling that I get from creating pieces along those subjects and themes. You are- and the Queen both love the countryside and animals. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I'm really passionate about my horses as well, which has always been something that um, I suppose I felt a connection um, with the Queen. Along with that. All the, you know, all the events that have been on that have involved horses, I've either watched yeah. in person since I was a little girl or I've watched on telly um, since I was so tiny. And I, I ride myself. I've always surrounded myself by horses. So I suppose, yeah, that's something else that, you know, you sort of become familiar with the queen and um growing up and yeah have that have that shared passion really yeah now there was another piece of art you did wasn't there which was just a couple of weeks ago to mark her death which was her prince philip and one of her horses right it was it was it was um her majesty what i imagine is maybe more her favorite attire one of her walking coats and a headscarf um i I love those photos those more um those personal photos Photos that we see where um, she's maybe you could argue in her happier places, whether that's a put down or what you like to say, out in the countryside yeah. um, among wildlife, amongst animals. And she's arm in arm with Prince Philip walking away again from the back. Um, she's leading one of her fell ponies, which we then saw featured um, during her funeral celebrations. Which just I was doing okay until that point, and the two corgis, and then yeah. I was I was a mess, I was an emotional mess at that <laughs> point. And um, to the left is also a corgi again, following royally behind Prince Philip. So I just wanted, I just wanted to capture this idea of her being re- reunited with all her most loved, oh, I say, people and animals. Which to me is her horses, her corgis, and of course her beloved Prince Philip. And yeah, it was just something that I just felt as an artist and illustrator, just to re- respond again by painting, by drawing, and sort of offer my deepest sympathy. To the family and just wanted to commemorate and honour her in that way. That was such a nice touch at the procession and the funeral scene, the Queen's horse and all her corgis. Oh, it was. Like I say, I was I was managing to hold it together quite well and then yeah. another pony stood by herself with <laughs> <laughs> and the two corgis. I was just, oh no, I was, I was a mess. I was an emotional mess. <laughs> yeah. And are you working on anything else, either to do with the Queen or just wildlife stuff that's coming up? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm always working on something. Um, I'm not working on anything um, else to do with the royal family or Her Majesty. I feel like the, the funeral sort of um, brought a lot of closure to so many, even though I respect that the family's still in mourning. Yeah. Obviously, of course they are. Um, but I suppose it marked the end of an era and the start of a new one. And um, I just wanted to just, you know, there's, there's those three pieces really that are out there. And I suppose each one marks in its own way so many historic points, not just from her rent, particularly from, from um, this year. And it's, it's been it's been a roller coaster of a year, hasn't it? And um, yeah. I feel like having those out there sort to of feel like, you know, it's... Um, that, that's enough. I've sort of, you know, created and put out there everything that I want to. Um, whether anything comes, um, you know, when you think ahead to the coronation and things like that, it might be quite nice and I can um, mark it again in a visual, illustrative way. Um, but everything I create, um, without sounding corny in any way, comes from myself first and wanting to create something. Um, so I'm sort of, I'm always led by myself and whether I want to create something I feel the need to sort of want to capture a moment in time or celebrate it or honour it um, so we're happy really but now I'm working on quite a few animal pieces at the moment and mm. um, been getting all the last 
things in place for Christmas. I started off doing Christmas cards, you see, about 10 years ago when I was 13, 14. So, um, yeah, now we're sort of in um, mid-late September, it's um, thinking ahead to that next and yeah. getting everything prepped and there'd be more business during the festive season. Is there anything for Halloween? Do you do anything for that? It would have been nice, to, nice, and it was on my list of this year, but of course, with everything that's happened this summer, uh, everything's been a bit <laughs> last minute. Um, I love yeah. to be organised usually, but this year um, I've had to let go of my organisation a little bit and just be a little bit more spontaneous. Um, so unfortunately, there's not particularly anything for Halloween, but no. certainly it's Christmas. Yeah. And um, yeah, maybe maybe next year I'll be able to um, include Halloween and have a little bit more uh, time to focus on that one as well yeah well where are we able to find all of your artwork and keep up to date with you everywhere everything that's um, currently available is on my website which is on com. there's my full portfolio on there my online shop with my cards my prints um, I have some other stationery and gift bits and pieces and um, also you can read and find out a little bit on me about me on there um, and then there's social media I'm on Twitter Facebook Instagram where I share um, new pieces, works in progress. You see a little bit more behind the scenes. Uh, Mm. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I think I'm quite easy to find, especially yeah. at the especially now with what's happened. <laughs> yes. Well, many thanks for joining us today and good luck with the rest of your projects. Oh, thank you so much.